you know, try to avoid new on, new on, new. <laughs> so when you're trying to do something, you know, new, try to, you know, isolate those things and do them gradually. That's kind of how we approached it in order to uh, have the capacity to deal with the challenges that we're inevitably going to come. Welcome to Get Unstuck and On Target, the weekly podcast that offers senior leaders insights and strategies to not only lead with confidence and vision, but also to achieve groundbreaking results. I'm your host, Mike O'Neill. I coach top-level executives on the power of ethical leadership to forge teams to be as united as they are effective. In each episode, join me for insightful conversations with leaders just like you, providing practical advice to help you get unstuck and propel you and your company forward. Let's get started. Joining me is Al Karmazolu. Alp is the Executive Managing Director of Construction for Rangewater Real Estate, a fully integrated rental housing company with assets across the Sun Belt and Mountain West. In his role, Alp oversees the construction management, design management, and quality control functions in support of all the projects under development while also managing Rangewater Construction, that is Rangewater's in-house construction company. Today's topic is going to be entrepreneurship, and you'll see why shortly. Welcome, Al. Great to be with you, Mike. Al, we've had a chance to chat on more than one occasion just by means of kind of introducing to our listening audience. What caught my attention about you was several fold. One is what you do, but two, your interest. You have a strong interest in developing people, developing organizations. And that obviously is right up my alley. So I thought you would be an interesting person to one, not only connect with on LinkedIn, but as we interacted, I thought you'd make a great guess in large part because you were brought on at Rangewater to start a new business. That is the uh, an in-house construction company. Can you kind of set the stage for us, Alp? Tell us a little bit more about Rangewater and what is it they did and why did the decision be made to start a construction arm? Sure. Yeah, happy to. Um, so the company today is uh, 16 years old. So um, about four years ago, um, they decided to in- integrate vertically into construction. Uh, at that point, company had done really well at its core business uh, development and had grown to a certain size, and they were um, really looking to take the next step in the company's evolution. So it was a strategic initiative to bring construction in-house. Um, the, maybe kind of an example I can think of that maybe a broader you know, viewership can relate to is uh, Amazon integrating into logistics. I think about that a lot. So... Now, when you think about Amazon, it's an online bookstore. That's how it started. It has a lot of facets of its business, um, but its biggest cost is really logistics. And I'm um, talking about warehouses and the final mile delivery and trucking. Um, and um, they, you know, after a certain point, they felt the need to um, bring that in house. That's driven by two things. First of all, uh, it's a key driver of performance. Um, construction is your biggest risk when you're a developer. Uh, if you cannot execute in construction, obviously your investment is at risk uh, meaningfully. Um, second, there's a financial element of that. Um, Two thirds of a development project's cost is in the construction. So the idea is to take a cost center, a very significant one, and try to convert to a profit center. Uh, that makes sense. So th- those are the reasons why. Um, and for that, you know, they made the decision uh, leadership here about four years ago, and I joined the company shortly thereafter with that, uh, you know, with that remit. Uh, and we've been on our journey since. When I introduce the topic of entrepreneurship, I'm contrasting that with entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And before we go too much further, um, let's make sure that you and I are on the same wavelength. And that is when I use the term entrepreneurship, uh, I... I think it means a certain thing. Why don't you define it as you understand entrepreneurship? Sure. Yeah. It's a, um, ultimately you are creating a, you know, something new, 
um, but within an existing structure, within an existing, uh, in this case, an existing company, existing organization. Um, so it is um, has certain elements that are very blank canvas, uh, but also at the end of the day, it needs to be a very good uh, puzzle piece for the overall company. Uh, so you cannot, you know, it needs to fit with an interesting business, and uh, that that forms the context of a lot of the decisions uh, you make, uh, you have to make throughout that journey. You know, Alp, you mentioned blank canvas. That's the advantage of starting something new. But your company is 60 plus years old. 16, it, sorry. One six. One six. Yes. yes. Nonetheless, in 16 years, a company really begins to take on uh, how they choose to do business. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've been tasked with starting a new business unit. But how have you aligned the vision that, that you kind of had going into the role with the broader goals of Rangewater? Uh, great question. Yeah, I I think first and foremost, um, there was a natural fit there. Just culturally, uh, what the company had set in place and you know what I thrive in and my core values, there was really good alignment. Um, company was really... Um, Range Order has a really good reputation in the marketplace. Uh, I knew of it from the outside. I did my own research, obviously, throughout the process. But there was a very good fit out of the gate. So that part of it was not very um, – it didn't really require me to adapt much. But obviously, that's at the highest level. But as you kind of go deeper and deeper into the organization, you, um, you, know, you find out uh, things you need to work on. Um, and one of the biggest challenges for us um, was the fact that you know construction company set up as an internal service provider for the development business. Uh, so uh, inherently, that's a relationship that can breed conflict uh, because one side is revenue is the other side's cost, and you have mm -hmm. uh, teammates on both sides that are trying to do really well. Uh, and really the biggest probably challenge from a leadership standpoint was to create an environment in which those sides of the house pull in the same direction uh, through through the common goals of the company uh, rather than their individual interests at that you know, point in time. You were recruited for this role. You knew going in that you might be presented with these types of challenges. What have you found has been most helpful to you and to your team to bring that team together to deal with what is already kind of an inherent tension mm -hmm. by its nature, revenue cost? Um, I, I have had experience with uh, similar, uh, you know, setups, not... I wasn't in charge of creating one, but I've been on both sides of this equation in my previous stops in my career. So I was um, eyes wide open about the challenge, um, and um, we really had a very good understanding out of the gate as to what was really important um, when we were going to get on this new venture. Um, so there was very good alignment with the rest of the leadership team, and we made that pretty much the most important thing. Uh, that is the main thing. Um, there are a lot of challenges with creating a new company uh, that are technical in nature, uh, but this one is very um, cultural value based uh, challenge. So um, we were that was an expectation set out of the get go with every person we hired, uh, as well as the teammates that were already here um, on the development side that were, were very they were very welcoming. Um, because they understood what we're trying to do, and they also understood that um, in order for it to be successful, it had to be set up a certain way. You know, I'm encouraged to hear what you're describing here. Um, I see all too often uh, companies lose sight of that. They look at this, this is a new business, it's supposed to generate money, they go hire a take charge type person, and before you know it, all of a sudden, it's not working the way it originally was kind of conceived. You know, you are part of a business that's been around for 16 years, but you're starting something new. You're nurturing something new. And innovation is something that I suspect you've had to tap into. And that is, if you're going to be an effective entrepreneur, you have to be innovative in how you go about doing things. 
again, you don't know this question's coming because I didn't know uh-huh. I was going to ask it till just now. Can you think of maybe a time when you had to think and perhaps act creatively to solve a problem? Um, I What comes to mind, Mike, when I hear that question is really all the work we had to do to really integrate the two companies. So um, we, you know, construction, you know, folks that are in the construction business have a lot of technical expertise related to nuts and bolts of how a building comes together. Uh, and uh, what was maybe not, and construction is a very, um, you know, old school industry. We don't build the houses that differently now compared to, you know, a century ago. Mm. Um, but innovation for us was really in the process of development. We took all that construction expertise that are traditionally on the backside of a project uh, and moved it all the way to the front end um, and really have the upfront development folks have the benefit of that knowledge and in the planning of the projects, kind of incorporate all of that, that which allowed us to so far get to a place where execution is a lot more seamless because we pre-planned our work uh, at the project level with all that uh, you know knowledge that was embedded in the construction uh, teammates that we bought. So that was innovative. That's not uh, you don't always have that. It's very common with construction folks to kind of show up when you put a shovel in the ground. Uh, and uh, then you kind of start finding out these problems. So we were very intentional about, do, you know, not doing that. The intentionality that you made reference to, it sounds like it was kind of baked in from the beginning. This is what we're trying to mm-hmm. to do. But inevitably, challenges arise. Um, you are in a very difficult industry, at least mm-hmm. from an outsider looking in. Um, construction, it would strike me that finding talented folks with the right skill sets, the trades, and the like. There's lots of competition out there. Mm-hmm. In what ways have you tried to position rangewater construction different than others that would make your company attractive to an applicant? Um, I think, you know, we stand on the shoulders of what the company has accomplished the first decade plus of its existence. So that uh, great reputation uh, was very, um, you know, was very helpful. Um, you know, out of the gate, one of the first things we had to figure out: okay, what are we going to call this thing? Is it a mm-hmm. different name, or is it, you know, range water construction? So, uh, you know, all the way down to those decisions you have to make. We just, you know, we're very, you know, we're thoughtful about that. Um, so, and we really, um, the 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 strategic decision we made was to really um, only start construction in the markets that range water has established itself as the mm. you know one of the best developers in town it's a local scale business construction that is um so we wanted to only build where we have already kind of had that reputation and knew what we were doing and you know trying to layer in construction in the most risk uh, mitigated possible way uh one of the you know uh, advices I had received out of the gate uh, early on was, you know, try to avoid new on new on new. <laughs> so when you're trying to do something, you know, new, try to you know isolate those things and do them gradually. Uh, so um, that was um, that's kind of how we approached it in order to uh, have the capacity to deal with the challenges that we're inevitably going to come. Uh, but we're trying, you know, uh, minimize risk as much as possible on the front end. Now, your company has a, a very well-designed website. Um, it describes who you are and how your all's company tends to operate. But as I'm envisioning, when you're trying to attract folks into construction, mm-hmm. they might not necessarily go to the website. What I love about what you just shared is that if you're going into communities that you already have a presence, mm-hmm. an applicant can literally go see what it is that they're being asked to build. They can see the attention to detail, the the clear focus on excellence, um, the professional, everything that y'all touch kind of is conveyed. It would strike me as that is probably probably a very powerful recruiting tool to basically focus initially on where you have a stronghold and because people can see it firsthand. They know going right in what that expectation is. I think I, I applaud what you're all doing there. 
Has that met your all's expectations, that approach? Yeah. No, you hit the nail on the head. That's that was exactly what we hoped uh, and you know, worked out for us, I would say. Uh, and it's not just the uh, just not the direct hiring, but also um, construction is, um, you know, you have a lot of subcontractors uh, that sits, uh, you know, under a general contractor. Uh, so, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, you're recruiting them as well. Uh, because when you think about it, our industry was, you know, things have cooled down over the last year or so, but we went through an unprecedented, um, you know, period in construction where, um, really, the, there was great demand on subcontractor services and material supplier services. So uh, it was pretty much a seller's market in that sense. So we actually had to earn their business as well, even though that might not seem intuitive to everybody. Uh, so um, that's why, you know, having the range water name, uh, a lot of the folks that we end up hiring or the folks that we worked with uh, have had been on range water projects before in some shape or form, which, which was very, very helpful. Alp, given your interest in leadership, leadership development, um, what have you learned in the time that you've been in this role about leadership that has proven to be most surprising? Yeah. Um, I think, I would say maybe I had a hunch on this, maybe it confirmed, uh, but to the degree to which it is confirmed is surprising. Um, I think, um, you know, when you're not in the seat, the way you imagine that envision the job is a little, you know, quite a bit different than the way it ends up being. It's all about, um, I, I, I figured that the technical sides of it was going to be, um, more, um, more important, if you would, than the, um, you know, the cultural and leadership challenges. Uh, so I find myself spending a lot more time about how our teams are working together and a lot less about the um, nuts and bolts and, you know, um, you know, building the, you know, building capabilities, building the systems, building the processes. That's very important. That all needs to be done. Um, but uh, I think the mo most important part of it is just making sure that the teams are working well together. Uh, then, you know, you, you, you can get to a lot uh, if that's the case. Alp, you have a very impressive academic background, and uh, you know, with advanced training, with graduate degrees, um, what did you find that these excellent schools got wrong about the real world? Yeah, I've taken, you know, leadership modules and leadership courses, and it's, um, you know, you have ethics classes and kind of that kind of stuff. It's 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 a good attempt, uh, but I think it is. I don't know if you can learn it in the school setting, but it is a lot more important than, you know, actual, um, you know, the, 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 the classroom content, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it's kind of, sort of it, I guess it all becomes about people and, you know, leadership ultimately as you, as you advance in your career. Yeah, I find it fascinating to hear you describe that some of the biggest challenges you have and maybe very, that would be speaking to what is traditionally the question I would ask and as examples where you got stuck <laughs> you know, what did it take to get unstuck you may want to elaborate on that but you were anticipating more technical challenges and you've what you found out is the the attention to the people aspects the culture aspect the leadership that <laughs> is what really has paid off uh, most in the long run so let me go back to that question can you reflect on an example where perhaps you your company, or maybe even a client, got stuck. And when that happened, what did it take to get unstuck? I think I can think of three things. Um, first of all, you really need to have a long-term plan and your guiding principles right. Uh, because when you get stuck, all you need to do is kind of take a step back and evaluate it in the you know context of that. That's really the whole point of <laughs> you know having your long-term plan and having those guiding principles. <laughs> Um, that is the most important part. Um, two, I think you need a good group of people around you. Uh, some days my wife, some days it's a friend of mine that I worked with in the past, sometimes a coworker here, and sometimes it's some you know advisor of some sorts. Um, I have a personal coach uh, that helps me a lot as well. Um, so you need uh, you need people 
that know you that had your interest in heart uh, and also can kind of help you get through those things. Uh, and then third thing, I think this is something I actually uh, learned here at Range Water um, is it's okay to lose a battle if you're going to win the war. Uh, so kind of playing the playing the long game with these uh, challenges and issues you're uh, running into, and maybe you know war is not the best analogy, but I think it's commonly understood. Um, it's okay to give give on things uh, for the for the greater mission. Um, so it's um, there were points in my life where uh, I dug my heels too deep. Now I reflect back on that and kind of got stuck uh, in a in a in a headlock with somebody. And uh, that's you know I'm not proud of those moments. Uh, that were not you know productive. And really, when you're in you know my position. Um, when you when you personally get stuck, I think a lot of people get stuck with you, and that's actually selfish and irresponsible. So I try a lot uh, and not to get in the way of things. So those are great examples, Alp. You know, we've been talking about entrepreneurship, but there may be an aspect of entrepreneurship that we haven't touched on that you think might be important. Anything come to mind? Um, I think. It's been very rewarding um, and a great, actually, intellectual challenge as well to just kind of have that blank canvas. We kind of started with that. Um, I liken it to, you know, imagine designing a new city. You would have, you know, perfect city blocks and perfect grid line. And, um, you know, just having been part of organizations that were. Uh, doing things for a long time prior to me joining. Uh, just being able to do something from scratch with all those learnings and uh, creating something that is, um, you know, lean and lean and without a lot of, you know, waste in it has been has been great. Uh, and we um, always, you know, try to, you know, look at things through that lens. Um, you know, do we need to implement a new procedure? Do we need to implement a new process? Do we have to do this? Or, you know, there's there's beauty in simplicity uh, and there's a lot of wisdom in simplicity, I think. So um, creating something from scratch allows you to start with simplicity rather than, um, you know, take something that is already very com complicated and try to turn it around and see it. So. Yeah, I have embraced the idea that um, all organizations have some semblance of a life cycle to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas you're part of an organization that's been around for 16 years, the amount of time that, that your company has been around is much shorter than that. And I guess the question I would have for you is, how do you envision the business that you're leading right now? How do you envision it will mature? Mm -hmm. and, and what are the things that, that you as a leader of this uh, aspire for this particular business unit? We're very young. Uh, our leadership team is very young. Uh, our CEO is, was our founder uh, and is in his early 50s. So we have a good bit of runway in front of us. Um, so it's we're still in the very kind of high energy growth stage of our business, I would say, even though we're recognizing that established player in our space. Me personally, what I think about is kind of my goal um, every day is to really make myself obsolete. <laughs> Um, the it's it's easy to fall in the trap of doing everything yourself or putting your fingerprints on everything uh, because it's small enough you can control it early on, uh, but that will not end up in a scalable business and that is not the ultimate goal and definition of success here. Um, this needs to, you know, be able to operate without me, um, and that's that's the goal. So I try to be very disciplined about um, not getting in the middle of things just because I can. Uh, I, I, I need to, it kind of, we kind of run it like as if we're 10 times the size, if that makes sense. Uh, and everything we do today, we kind of think about it as, okay, are we going to be able to continue to do this? Or, uh, you know, or should we really invest the time now to make it more efficient? You know, you can, you know, if you're not worried about that, you can do a lot of, but then that's how life gets complicated. That's how you lose simplicity. So uh, we're kind of living with, that uh, always in the backdrop. Yes, yeah, real clear to me, Alp, that your strategic mindset has served you well. Um, that came through loud and clear. As you reflect on this conversation we've had today, 
What do you want our viewers and listeners to have as takeaways? Have an have have a plan. Um, I would say, and uh, a lot of times, I think the word is misused. Uh, people have some directional aspirations, and they call that a plan, and it's not a plan. Plan requires um, a, a detail. Plan requires commitment, and then uh, requires a lot of fortitude along the way to stick to those things, stick to your, um, you know, goals and your guiding principles. Um, the business changes around you, you adjust. That's not what I'm talking about, but like, what you know, what is this company? What is it going to stand for? How are we going to go about it? What kind of, you know, organization do we want to be? Those things uh, you need to, you know, figure out up front and you need to stick to them. Um, I've been very, very fortunate uh, here uh, for two reasons, I think. One, um, the company embraced uh, me and Range Water Construction as an extension of me um, very well. And I think every, I mean, everything we talked about before I joined, as I joined the company, um, the leadership here did its, uh, held its end of the bargain. And that that's not I don't take that for granted one day, and it's it's not it's not always the case. Uh, and two, um, we've been very fortunate with the you know first ten people, if you would, that we hired. Uh, really, really good hit rate. Uh, folks that have come here for the right reason, that are doing kind of uh, what you know what we all talked about. And uh, so I've been I've been weird kind of up and down on the three three sixty. I've been very fortunate. Uh, with that aspect of it. So that just makes the job a lot more fun and honestly a lot easier. Before we wrap up, I would like to challenge our listeners to a question. And that is, it's a question that really affects all leaders. And that is, have you ever wondered why people choose to follow your lead? Is it out of your obligation or do they genuinely believe in your vision? Leadership thrives on clarity and competence. It's not just about command. It's about cultivating practical solutions that drive real bottom line results. Visit bench-builders.com for personalized leadership strategies that leverage Fortune 500 insights. We're here to elevate your leadership potential and help you make substantial progress towards your goals. Lead in a manner that inspires people to follow because they are drawn to your vision, not merely because they must. I encourage you to reflect on how you can lead with clarity and competence, attracting followers, not out of obligation, but inspiration. Al, your insights have been invaluable. Thank you for joining us. Um, my thank you for uh, inviting me. Thank you for giving me the platform. This was uh, great. Um, I, you know, quite honestly, I haven't done this before, and uh, you've been very helpful along the way in easing the nerves and uh, helping me get out of my comfort zone. So I really appreciate that. And I hope the, you know, listeners and viewers find the conversation useful. I'm confident that they actually will. If folks want to engage with you further or have some questions, how can they reach out to you? I think LinkedIn is the best uh, best avenue. Um, so um, I'm sure you'll have my name on the show notes. That's how I am on LinkedIn. So I welcome everyone to kind of reach out and reference this. And I'm, I'd love to connect with you and uh, see if we have some common interests and common connections. We, in fact, will do that. We'll put all your contact information in Perfect. the show notes. Uh, thank you, Alp. Thanks, Mike. I also want to give a big thank you to our subscribers for tuning in. And I hope today's discussion provides you with some insights to help you get unstuck and on target. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Get Unstuck and On Target. I hope you've gained insights to help you lead with confidence and drive your organization forward. Remember at Bench Builders, we're committed to your success, your leadership excellence, and your strategic growth. If you've enjoyed our conversation today, please leave a review, rate, and subscribe to keep up with our latest episodes. This show really grows when listeners like you share it with others. Who do you know who needs to hear what we talked about today? 
Until next time, I encourage you to stay focused on the target and continue to break new ground on your leadership path.